Do you love poutine? Of course. Poutine Who doesn't? Me, because I'm vegan and it's gross. Hey, everybody. I am Haley. And I am David. And welcome to The Soccer Show, where we talk all things soccer. So, Cop, no league games this weekend. So instead, we are going to talk about our biggest takeaways from the FA WSL so far, seeing that it's like our first real full season getting into it. Yeah, and you know, I've loved being able to watch not just the top teams, but follow it from the top to the bottom. And my biggest takeaway thus far is just how technical this league is. You can tell that these girls, these women, excuse me, were born with a ball at their feet, that it is just so incredible to watch. I remember when players like Kim Little and Jess Fishlock came into the league and kind of took the NWSL by storm and seeing it now with just 90% of the players on the field, I, I've enjoyed it week in and week out. I've really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed your born with the ball at their feet cliche. I thought that was awesome. Thank you. Um, you know, my takeaway is how physical this league is. Um, and, you know, we're used to, you know, certain players being protected. And in FAWSL, like, it's, yeah, it's it's not like that. They're going in for the ball and it's going to teach players how to ride tackles and how to be, have better awareness. Now it's time for the good stuff. So Hayley, we have each picked our top three plays of the season. Remember, they are subjective. They are our top three plays. And I'm going to let Hayley go first so I can be the first to rinse her for her choices. I love that word, rinse. Yeah, it's a good right. one. Yeah, it's a nice one. Okay, at number three, big surprise, I've got a save. And I actually pulled a save from last week. It was the Zinsberger triple save. The first save was just pure athleticism. Second save, she recovered to a great position. Third shot, she holds the ball. I love this. I also love how her teammates ran behind her, protected the net, didn't allow them to chip the ball. And that that was just kind of like one of those once a season saves. It was like a John Wick fight scene. And she was John Wick. Just I will take on 100 people all at the same time. I love I love a, a pop culture reference. Hayley, what's your number two? Number two is Ellie Roebuck. They were playing United. Again, this is something where Press gets in behind. She thinks she has a goal and Roebuck recovers, comes out of nowhere. She actually gets stuck a little high, which makes this save that much better, right? She gets caught out of the box thinking that she's gonna beat her for speed. Change of direction was much faster than I, mine has ever been in my life and she gets back. And I mean, Press saw green space and goal. And again, 99 times out of 100, that ball's going in the back of the net. It was an incredible save and an incredible recovery. Yeah, she, she pulled the robbery on Press, which is very rare. And if I was gonna, if I was gonna guess, I would say surely not that you're gonna choose another save. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be that brash. No, I wouldn't be that predictable, but I am that predictable. It is a save. Um, and Katrine Berger here. I love this. It was against Miedema. So she's making these saves against the best players in the world. What impresses me so much about her too is that she's not making 12 saves a game, right? Chelsea's very, very good. So she's making, she's touching the ball three, four, five times a game and she's focused for that entire period. And then when she's called upon, makes the massive save. Again, similar to that Roebuck save the other day where she has to kind of take her hands off her body, widen her stance a little bit and then gets a foot on it, making those saves against the best players in the world. Yeah, I, let me tell you, Heidi, I am shook that you chose all goalkeepers. So I'm going to come in now and save the day with my completely unbiased, neutral uh, choices. And you'll know they're neutral from the teams. Number three, you cannot you cannot talk about this season without talking about Sam Kerr, who scored 17 goals in 19 games. But she's proven again that... You know, she's a fox in the box. And this one against um, Villa, she just smashes that ball so cleanly. It's unstoppable, Haley. Just clean. She she strikes that clean. Yeah, and number two, uh, I'm going to go for the another player that you, I think is, you know, just goes hand in hand when you talk about FAWSL, you think of Viv Midima. This is a, a fantastic volley against Spurs. And obviously it's a little bit sweeter for me because it is against Spurs, the way she hits it. But, uh, you know, for, for young players watching FAWSL, watch her movement, it is unbelievable. And Hayley, my number one, 
favourite play of the season so far in a completely unbiased, neutral view was Rachel Daly for <gasps> West Ham United in October against Manchester United, which makes it even more sweeter. So she gets by and she looks up like she's going to cross it, but she uses her eyes to fake the little cross shot and it dips in over the keeper people will say she didn't mean it but we've worked on her eye movement there to sell across when you see the keeper creeping you see it she does she picks her eyes up she sees that the keeper's off her line and that chip is tough to execute that's one oftentimes you see kind of going just over the bar just over the goal but to drop it in there that is or, nice. or sometimes out of the stadium just you know <laughs> rosy yeah. <laughs> or Rose Ed, if you want to talk the Queen's English, yeah. Today, we are very lucky to be joined by an Olympian, a bronze medalist Olympian, and former Canadian national team member. She's been in all the leagues and all round good person, Lauren Sesselman. Hi. <laughs> I am so honored to be here with you two. I'm so excited. Sess, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. We wanted to pull in a little bit of your Canadian expertise today because we've got four Canadian national team players playing over in the Super League, and we thought who better to speak to their talents than you. All right, so first up, we've got Shalina Zadorsky. Obviously, Tottenham hasn't had their best season, but she's already been named captain and is pretty much starting every single game at center back. She's incredible. I mean, I, I got to see her from the very beginning when she joined the national team and to see her kind of just grow into her own and, you know, playing for Tottenham is such a huge thing for her. And you've seen that in her game. It's, you know, with the national team in these last few fixtures that she's played, she's just grown so much as a player. I mean, she's a leader. You see her on and off the pitch. She's um, you know, she's just incredible. And now being named captain is just a testament to who she is as a person and just how much of a leader she is on, on the field. And she's, you know, really stepped into that role at Tottenham. And, you know, it's been such a joy to watch her. She's really the epitome of the body on the line type of player. And um, that's a player after my own heart. And just to see her grow, you know, from, you know, being in Orlando to now, um, it's been incredible to watch. Next up, we've got Adriana Leone who started the season really beautifully, but obviously had a season ending injury, had to have surgery. And I believe she's out for the rest of the year, which is a bit of a bummer because she started so strong. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Drew Drew. I'm, I'm very close to her and to see her evolve as a player as well. Um, and to see her just to really get more minutes, I think is, is pretty awesome. She wasn't playing that much in the NWSL and to really see her emerge as the star that she's becoming. Um, she's such a technically gifted player. I, you know, I love watching her on the ball. I think she's just really molded into, a, you know, her own now and really brought that spark, you know, as you've seen before her injury to the national team, you know, she just, you can just see it in her play. She's a lot more confident and, you know, unfortunately she, she has this, this injury and, uh, you know, I got to talk to her. She said she's going to be back soon. Um, so I'm excited for her to be back, hopefully for the Olympics. Next up, we have got Janine Becky, who seems to be very in form right now. We're kind of, you're kind of catching her at the right time. You know, she's fought for minutes and last week she scores a goal. Yeah, I mean, she's become a huge staple um, in the national team. And she's one of the most, you know, consistent players now. She's grown so much to that consistency. And I think that's a testament of her being and playing in Manchester City in that environment. Um, you see her on the ball more. You see her taking players on confidently more. And she's brought that to the national team. So I think it's been huge for her to be over in Manchester City, surrounded by, you know, those players. And I think she's really emerged. And I think being in that environment, um, it doesn't allow you to really be inconsistent. So it's pushed her day in and day out. And you see that in her play. Um, so I'm very proud of her. And she's scoring goals and she's making an impact. And, you know, she's emerged as a huge leader in the front line for the national team as well. So um, it's pretty special to see her. How much of your success do you think she can attribute to her trainer? To her trainer? Oh, well, definitely so much. I mean, I know Dave is, you know, trained a lot of amazing players. and right. All the goals, none of the misses. Yeah, exactly. Just the goals. <laughs> Last up, we've got Jesse Fleming. Jesse has been fighting for minutes, hasn't gotten a ton of time, but 
You can kind of say though that that Chelsea environment and learning there has helped her. Jessie is so, so special. She is so special. I call her like the the silent assassin. You don't know where she is in the field because she's so quiet. And then all of a sudden she's there, 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 and she's scoring these miraculous goals. I mean, she's had a huge banger for Canada the other day. And I mean, she joined the the senior team when she was only 15. And to see how much she's progressed and grown as a player um, and throughout UCLA and then now immersing herself in this type of culture and environment is probably the best thing for her. I mean, Chelsea's at the top of the table, you know, she's starting to get more minutes and they're starting to really see the things that she can do. I mean, she's emerged as such a huge leader on the national team, you know, scoring goals and um, you know, I'm excited to see her continue to grow. And I think, you know, going into this Olympic year, I think they're going to see even more of her and you just give her the, the minutes and she'll make something happen. So, um, I, I love Jesse and I'm excited to see more of her as well. Amazing. Well, Seth, thank you so, so much for that insight. We really appreciate it. Um, and we really, really appreciate you being here. So thank you for your time today. Well, thank you guys. You guys are amazing. I love the show and thanks. It's been an honor to be here with you. So thank you. Sess, you can come back on. You big us up. This is nice. You're loving it. <laughs> Honestly, you guys there. are amazing. Yeah. Like, I love watching your show. So this it's really fun for me to be able to interact with you guys. So I appreciate it. That is it for us on The Soccer Show. I am Haley. And I am David. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and also subscribe to the Just Women's Sports newsletter. Plus, you can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and of course, TikTok. Leave some comments. Let us know what we're doing. Let us know how much funnier we've got. Let us know that you completely disagree with our picks this week. It's all good. It's all good. We love to hear it and we will see you next week. Adios.